Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to test this passively cooled mini PC called the Z150 from a company Mini X. They have sent me this mini PC a few months back in exchange for a video review. Even though the PC was sent to me free of charge, I will still provide my honest opinion. And honestly, the only complaint I have about this mini PC is the customer support. For whatever reason, once I asked for official support page where I can download the drivers and latest BIOS for this mini PC, they stopped responding. I don't know what happened there, maybe the responsible person was fired or maybe the responsible person quit, but I didn't get any answers. So I waited a few months, didn't get any response and proceeded with the testing and reviewing the mini PC with the information I have on my hands. Technical specification of Mini X Z150 is pretty impressive for its size. As I have already mentioned, it comes with Intel N150 system on chip that supports single memory channel only. You can use either DDR5 or DDR4 with this CPU, but the manufacturers must pick either or. This PC comes with a single DDR4 memory slot for laptop as a DIMMs, so you can upgrade your memory in the future. For USB ports we have two USB 2, two USB 3 and one USB Type-C. Then we also have two M.2 slots, one for SSD, the other one for Wi-Fi expansion cards. Both of them can be upgraded. M.2 slot for SSD is PCI Express 3.0 x4 and Wi-Fi is PCI Express, not CNVI as far as I understand. The unit I have is equipped with a 512GB SSD from some no-name brand that I have never heard before, but under my testing it worked just fine. Wi-Fi here is Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. Realtek Ethernet is also present, and this one is RTL8125 with a 2.5GB speed. Audio is your standard Realtek ALC897. Then we also have two HDMI video outputs, and much to my surprise, we have a micro SD card reader that I really love for easier transfer of your files from your phone or camera. The size of the mini PC is really small. It's about 123, 128 to 46 millimeters. So you can have it on your hand. And the power is provided by an external power supply with the 12 volts DC output. Test results for Mini X Z150 are pretty positive. Sleep mode works just fine, and the PC can be awakened using the LAN command. So, wake on LAN works, you can put your PC to sleep and then wake it up whenever you need it. CPU and RAM tweaking are not available in the BIOS in any form, which is a bit disappointing, but you don't really need it with a mini PC. Intel PTT or TPM 2.0 emulation works just fine and Secure Boot works as well, so Windows 11 is fully compatible. Restore on power loss works as well and HDMI output can provide up to 2K at 120Hz or 4K at 60Hz. Every USB port including the USB-C port I have tested and all of them do work. The USB Type-C port I have tested with an external NVMe SSD adapter, so I fully saturated the USB Type-C bandwidth and did not detect any issues. Micro SD card reader also works just fine, I have tested it with my 256GB SD card and it worked with no issues. CPU clock frequency and temperatures are also fine. At idle, the CPU reaches up to 3.6 GHz when doing some light tasks, and the temps are about 45 degrees Celsius. Running Cinebench R23, we get somewhere between 2.9 and 3.4 GHz, and the temperatures reach up to 80 degrees Celsius, which is a bit weird because it is a bit higher than Cinebench R23 multi threading test. With all CPU cores utilized, we get frequency between 2.4-2.5 GHz, but the temperature settles at about 60-70 degrees Celsius. The only reasonable explanation I can find here is that it is easier to dissipate heat when all four CPU cores produce some small amount of heat, rather than one tiny core works at its maximum and produces more heat. 
Okay, in terms of features and test results, this mini PC is pretty decent and I did not identify any major flaws. We have all the necessary connectivity and all the necessary functions actually do work. How about the performance? This Intel N150 with just 4 efficient cores and not hyper-threading does not give much hopes. So, to provide you some sort of a benchmarking reference, I have assembled a DIY uh, mini PC using my 100 P250i motherboard I have tested in my previous video. The mini PC looks like this. Right now it is in a printed chassis from Modcase Evolution or Modcase Evo APU. Here I have Huanandri B250MI Mini ITX motherboard with the Intel Xeon E3 1275V6, 2 sticks 8GB each, DDR3-1866. Actually it's DDR3-1600 overclocked to DDR3-1866. As you can see, this one is significantly larger than the Z150 mini PC, but still it would be nice to compare the performance between this old Xeon E3 and modern, highly efficient Intel N150 CPU. The test results I will start with ADA64 memory test. Here I compare a single channel DDR4-3200 with the Intel N150 and dual-channel DDR3-1866 with the Xeon E3-1275 V6. In general, the performance of these two systems is very similar. Xeon E3 with the dual-channel configuration is slightly faster. We get somewhere about 27GB per second in read, write and copy with Xeon E3 and about 22-23GB per second with the Intel N150. Still, the latency is a bit better with N150, 46 nanoseconds against 58 nanoseconds. These kind of mini PCs are most likely gonna be used for web browsing, that's why I did test Google Octane benchmark. Here Xeon E3 is faster, especially when all CPU cores are utilized, thanks to it hyper-threading. With a single CPU core we get about 537 against 562,000 points, and with all CPU cores we get somewhere around 2400 against 3900 thousand points. Geekbench 6 is a synthetic benchmark, but it still tries to emulate some sort of a real-world usage, so a multi-core test does not fully utilize all CPU cores. Yet Xeon E3 is noticeably faster. So with a single core we are comparing 1259 points against 1516 points, and with all CPU cores utilized, we get 2900 points with N150 and almost 4900 points with the Xeon E3. Running OpenCL benchmark, we get 4264 and 5732 points. So in all these tests, Xeon E3 is faster and with all CPU cores utilized, it's noticeably faster. In the air of AI, I could not skip Geekbench AI benchmark. Here we have two sets of tests, one with the CPU, another one with the GPU. Starting with the CPU, we see that the Xeon E3 1275V6 is almost double as fast as Intel N150. Single precision gives us 837 against 2027 points, half precision 446 against 991 points, and quantized score is 1500 against 2400. Running the same test using GPU, E3 1275V6 is almost identical to N150, still its GPU is marginally faster. We get 899 against 988, 948 against 1154, and 633 against 799 points. So, unsurprisingly, Xeon E3 1275V6 that has 4 proper cores with hyper-threading is slightly faster than modern Z150 with just 4 cores and 4 threads. But how about the power consumption? Well, here I'm going to show you Cinebench R23 test results, power consumption and efficiency. But first let's take a look at the idle power consumption. Mini X Z150 Mini PC while idling consumes only 10 watts of electricity, which is very nice. But E31275 V6 DIY Mini PC is not that far ahead. It consumes only 16 watts while idling, which is also very nice. 
Running Cinebench R23, we get the following results. With a single core, we have 946 against 1116 points. With all the CPU cores utilized, we have 2127 points against 5410 points. So in this test, E3 1275 V6 is more than double as fast compared to Intel N150. This performance comes with a significant power consumption though. When running single-core test, N150 consumes about 19 watts from the wall, while E3 1275 V6 pulls 50 watts, so it's more than double. When running tests with all CPU cores, N150 consumes the same 19 watts because it is clocking much lower, but E3 1275 V6 system pulls from the wall around 110 watts of electricity. Calculating efficiency, when running single core, we get almost 50 points per consumed watt of electricity with N150 and only 22 points per watt with Xeon E3. When all CPU cores utilized, N150 is delivering about 112 points per watt of electricity, while Xeon E3 is only good for about 50 points per watt of consumed electricity. So, as you can see, the modern Intel N150 is uh, more than twice as efficient compared to E3 1275 V6. Okay, now it's time for a conclusion. In general, I really like this Z150 passive cooled mini PC from Mini X. Unlike several other mini PCs from China with passive cooling, this one does not throttle. The cooling is good enough here to dissipate about 20 watts of heat from the Intel N150 CPU. So, if you need a tiny, passive-cooled PC with a decent connectivity and you're not restricted with the performance demands, then this might be a very good option for you. Right now, on the official website, they no longer offer uh, 512GB SSD and 16GB of RAM, but the 8GB of RAM and 256GB SSD version would cost you somewhere about 315-320 euros, including 25% Swedish VAT tax. And for that money, I believe this is a pretty decent option. Comparing to my DIY mini PC, that would cost me about 250 euros if I would buy all the parts from eBay, AliExpress and other sources, you do pay a bit extra, but for that extra you get micro SD card reader, you get Wi-Fi, you get Bluetooth, you get 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, you get USB Type-C port, and you also get 4K at 60 Hz. While the old Xeon E3 1275 V6 is only able to output 4K at 30 Hz, which is pretty shameful. In terms of power efficiency, Intel N150 is also significantly better than Xeon E3 1275 V6. Under my testing, the old Xeon E3 can pull from the wall more than 110 watts of electricity, while this Intel N150 is extremely efficient and under stress test it consumes maximum 20 watts of electricity, so it stays uh, around uh, uh, 50, 60, 70 degrees Celsius, depending on how well ventilated area is and how much stress you put onto the CPU. All in all, I would say that DIY solution and this mini PC have totally different use cases and are addressing totally different markets. If you need such a PC, the DIY option is not going to satisfy you. If you're happy with the DIY solution and you already have some components, then there is no need to overpay for a compact modern mini PC. Because Xeon E3 is still a bit faster and a bit stronger than Intel N150, although it consumes a bit more power. So, with that I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and useful. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to you and see you in the next video.